Well, this afternoon, let's start with our sharp focus on the Sogakopa Bridge. There is danger on Ghana's longest bridge, the Sogakopa Bridge, as commuters are attacked and in some cases, vehicles knocked off due to darkness on more than 600 meter stretch of uh, the road. Now the 650 meter long bridge on the NY highway was tagged last year as a security zone by the Volta Regional Security Council after a secessionist group threatened to take over the bridge. However, joint news investigations reveal that the deployment of military men to the area has not been uh, addressed. And also there are more concerns about public safety, particularly as there is an entire blackout on that bridge. In a yet to be aired report, I put a spotlight on the Lower Volta Bridge, also known as the Sugakope Bridge, here at ASAPS. Well, so we are here on the Lower Volta Bridge. It's popularly called the Sugakope Bridge. And for those of you who are not aware of this piece of critical infrastructure, it's a bridge that links and connects the national capital, Accra, to the southern part of the Volta region. This very infrastructure we are talking about has been under threat by secessionist group Western Togoland, which earlier last year threatened to attack this bridge and hence that prompted the deployment of a military contingent to constantly supply security to the area. However, one piece is missing out of that puzzle in solving the problem. There's completely no light here and it's blackout here in the evening and this has been the case for the past five years on the 600 meter stretch which has seen many cars many vehicles many individuals and many revelers use and it's beginning to become a concern for residents here in Sogakope. for those of you who are not aware of the area it's in the southern part of the volta region and where we are now stretches all throughout into the town itself but you can come with me just to have a feel of how people with us here walking and using this area do not have any access to lights they do not know what's in the dark out there and you can just come along with me to have a feel of what's happening here so there are some railings here initially we understand that these railings never used to be and in fact some cars used to veer off the road into the river but that has been addressed what's the bigger problem here is that these cars that you see pass by could just walk, run into anybody because there there's simply no street light here on this critical piece of stretch and uh, it's the same story if you could just come with me throughout the whole 600 meter and residents are calling for action in fact let's speak to some of the residents and try and understand what their concerns are particularly as there are growing reports of cars knocking down individuals on this piece of stretch and also the accompanying concern about security. Seriously, this bridge, I think without this bridge, it will be very difficult for cars to be going in and out. Yeah, because this serves as a very highway. Without here, you can go to Aflao, Ho, Hohe, Menshi, and Pando, you can go there. It's only this bridge that connects everybody to that place. So I think the way there is darkness here, I think when we are even walking, you are afraid. You can get so even when cars incidentally, yeah, incidentally when they were even passing mistakenly, they even fall inside the bridge for some time ago. But before the letter came and do this, and then I think light is very important to be here because it is very dangerous to be walking in the dark on the river. So you can easily be, get attacked. Even cars can just stop and then just attack you, put you inside without anybody's knowledge about it. So I think if light is here. Everybody can live in peace or without any fear moving on the bridge. When, when you went to uh, Atipoku, that bridge is just something, uh, something small. But look at how they did it. Look at how they did it. And this, this is the longest one. And Atipoku is not ECOWAS road. And this one is ECOWAS road. I think the government to do something about it. And I know that all uh, the ECOWAS president is our president. Right. That's Nanado. Nanado. Yeah. I think he can do something about this he one. About he it. can do something about it. He can do something about it. Yeah. We need a light on the bridge, though. Right. 
we, they should repair the bridge very well. Yeah. When you sweep a um, door around four going, yeah. and a big car has passed this bridge up, you can hear it. You, you can feel you it. You can feel it on the bed that it shake. It, it shake. It shake. And even though when you are in your room, yeah, when you are in your room, you you feel it. Feel it. You feel it. feel it. You feel it that the the, the ground is shaking. How does it shake? <laughs> it's sick, like how it's sick, go, 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 something like that. You, you will feel it. Except of that um, special report, which is yet to be heard here on the Joy News Channel. In fact, there's a lot of reaction already greeting uh, what we have put out there. But this is not the first time Joy News is putting a spotlight on the lower Volta Bridge. In fact, about three years ago, my colleague Maxwell Agbaba uh, was at the same spot where, of course, there was a similar incident, particularly an accident that um, occurred between um, one of the motorists and also uh, an Okada um, rider. We have that report for you. We can just watch briefly the excerpts and then we'll speak to the Ghana Highway Authority on what they're doing about the situation. We'll bring that to you uh, shortly, uh, but this is a good time for us to try and get everything in perspective. Why has this problem persisted uh, for far too long? In fact, you heard there from residents indicating that the lower Volta Bridge has been in this situation for the past five years. And uh, for those of you who don't get a clear picture, what we need to tell you is that the lower bridge is just similar to the Adomi Bridge. For those of you who've used that stretch, you see that at night, there's lightning on that particular, lighting on that particular stretch. However, the case is different, just as we've indicated to you uh, in the report there on the lower side of the bridge. So what's the Ghana Highways Authority doing about this? Joining me in studio now is Cecil Bodai Wentum. Public Relations Officer of the Ghana Highway Authority. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. Nice, it's good to be talking to you at this to, moment. To, um, so yeah. um, let's start off from the genesis. Where did, did this problem start from? Uh, the fact that we're not having street lights on such a critical piece of infrastructure. Well, I am happy for this moment and also happy to use this opportunity to um, also share a word from the Ghana Highway Authority. <clears throat> I'm happy as a responsible media um, outlet, you have taken it upon yourself to channel the concerns of residents or commuters on that stretch. Yes, but when you speak to the engineers, they will tell you that sometimes maintenance issues um, necessarily will not deal, especially when there are no budgets in place. But for instance, when they maybe there are some developmental projects and there's the need to recognize some of these concerns you've talked about, that is where we move in. But I can understand from the picture and from the videos that you showed that obviously if you're traveling on that stretch at night, road safety becomes a concern for all of us. And uh, my checks from the road safety division before I moved to your studio indicated that our team of engineers have been there they have assessed the situation not long ago, just as you pointed out to me in our earlier discussion. And uh, they even went to the contractor, they have assessed the situation, and you know, the processes will start. Okay, so as it were to... a contract has been awarded. No, I can authoritatively say contract has been awarded, but um, the situation has been assessed. And once the engineers have assessed the situation, they will go with technical team, and amongst the technical team probably are one or two people who can also provide additional inputs. Mm. They can be contractors, they can be consultants, all put together. So that has been done. And I can assure you that in no time, um, the processes will start. And you know, the processes, again, um, is not instant, is not immediate, because you would have to go through procurement processes. And you know, when you trigger the process, the channels you would have to go through and all that. In situations where it becomes an emergency, that one, you know, I mean, instantly something will be done. Mm. But as far as the bridge is concerned, I have not heard from any of our engineers telling me that it is in a dangerous situation, as sometimes people will put it. You remember not too long ago, a similar publication was put out there, especially on social media, about the Adomi Bridge, and so much noise was made. I can tell you for a fact, when you speak to our engineers, they will tell you that the bridge, the vibrations that people talk about is within the acceptable limits. You understand? So it is, and don't forget, Adomi is hanging on strings. 
So it's obvious that definitely as and when vehicles move and the, the continuous movement will bring about some of those vibrations and all that, but it is within an acceptable... So you're saying that's a similar as, thing that's happening? Yes, the they have done their assessment. I spoke to two of our uh, bridge engineers. They've, they've been there, they've done the assessments. They spoke about the expansion joints that one of the gentlemen you spoke to was talking about. I mean, of course, they have to be replaced. But as, as I said, it's all, it also boils down to funding. And it does not raise so much concern regarding emergency. But I guess it's a matter of public no, safety. No, it is. You, it you is. agree? No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. agree. Bless, yeah. I agree with you. Okay. It's, it's a matter of public safety. It's mm. a matter of concern for us as well. And let me reiterate the point again. I've, I spoke to the director, Road Safety, before mm. coming here. Mm. And he's indicated. I was even with him when he called one of his managers who came to me to confirm that, yes, right. indeed, they were on the stretch. As you told me, mm. they were on the stretch and they had done the assessment right. and they'll be working on it. Okay. I, I, why not shut the bridge to allow repair to take place? Because um, just as we pointed out, some of the railings yeah. are uh, obsolete and there'll be a need for some new structures so, to be, uh, so to be that, put, that, put in place that now. Just so, so are you considering that? Are you putting oh, that on I, the table? I can't speak authoritatively about that because I, our conversation has not got into that point mm. that we will shut down the bridge. And don't forget that it's a major connector and it's a major highway like you indicated. I mean, so shutting it down obviously will mean um, we're bringing a lot of distress to commuters. We'll bring a lot of um, what do you call problems mm. to those who apply the stretch of road. But as it stands, it is not a serious matter. It is not a serious situation as people are putting it out there. Sometimes we must also understand the way people speak. And I remember when this Adomi Bridge issue came up. But this is about the lower Yeah, I know. Bridge, right? I know. But I mean, and mm. just as we have done major assessment on all our bridges, mm. and my engineers have told me that this exercise is not only on the Sugakope Bridge, on all our bridges. Mm. And if you get to appreciate our bridge pr programs that we have, you will know that there is some serious work going on. And all those bridges you see have lifespans, mm. just as every engineering design takes into consideration lifespan. So taking into account the lifespan and of the Sugakope Bridge. most of those Bridge. bridges, yeah, right. most of those bridges, especially the Adomi, they've been designed to be there for 100 years. Okay, I get the point. But taking into account what's happening on the Sugakope stretch, mm -hmm. how long can you go without repairs? I, I guess that, that's of well, concern because well, now well, because it's evident. From you the conversation see, I had yeah, right. with my engineers this afternoon before coming here, it is something which... It's a work in progress, if I, I could... I could yes, I but could. how long can you go without repairs or I, maintenance I or whatever? I not give a definite period how long we can go. But, again, it depends on the kind of conversation they have with me. Mm. And to tell me, then I can inform the public mm. how long we can go mm. without repairs. But as I speak, I'm telling you, it is not a very bad situation. You're sure about if, that? Yeah, if it's about the lighting, fine, I understand, because I just watched the pictures, right. in fact, the videos. Right. I saw it myself, right. and I know, obviously, when you drive in the night mm -hmm. and you come across such... If it, let's, let's assume there's a vehicle broken down on that stretch, and the vehicle probably has no, what do you call it, triangle to warn oncoming or approaching vehicles. You can imagine how it will feel. Uh -huh. And this is a situation where we have a lot of such broken down vehicles without it. They put leaves, sometimes blocks, lorry ties to warn approaching vehicles. It is wrong. Rather, I would suggest that we should partner the police, the law enforcement people, the patrol people, so that they will regularly be on that stretch mm -hmm. to provide some kind of, um, what do you call, safety, mm -hmm. temporary one. Whilst we do the engineering thing behind, you know, the door. Okay, now, now from what the residents support. are telling us, it's not as though street yeah. lights were not yeah. or have never been yeah. on the stretch. They were there, yeah. right? And you've taken tolls on that particular stretch for quite some time now. Where is the money? Where are you keeping the money? And why are you not Bless. using the road tolls to redevelop the same stretch Bless. that you've collected funds yes. on? I wish you would not, you, you had not mentioned this tolls business because it, it will lead into something else. But you know that the tolls are collected, it goes into 
a particular fund. Yeah, and we but, just, but it's for a specific but, but purpose. Don't you, have, you agree GHA that GHA does not have direct access to that fund. Really? Yes, we don't. Uh, but you're in control it's of the funds. No, 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 it's no, no, we don't, to be we don't control the fund. But you collect the funds. No, no, no. But this is, we collect on behalf of government. Right. This is what and you've collected something over the understand. years. You agree? No, no, no. So you see, the road fund is, is a fund on its own. Right. It has a board. It has technical people who work. So money goes there. Right. And then when we, if I need money from you, you are my father, mm -hmm. I can't go into your pocket like that. I would have to ask you first. I apply. So there are processes. So you see, in the past, we will have some emergency funds sitting somewhere. But look, we called for the procurement law. We called for some of these regulations so that it brings checks and balance into the system where we are all operating. Is it a so matter... It not be a situation where... Is, is, is it a yeah. matter of checks and balance or you're simply broke and you can't no, no, fix the breach? No, so the point is that we... I can't say GHA is broke because we don't control the fund. You're basically telling me you don't have the no, fund. No, we don't control the fund. Right, but you've taken some money, money on that no, particular... No, government has taken, yes. Yeah. I, but we, we it's for a purpose, way. right? It back, is for a purpose. Backed by law, purpose. backed by so law as well. So I've just told you yeah. that we have triggered... When was the last time you applied for this fund? You mean to fix the Sukhapoke yes. bridge? No, um, I can't speak authoritatively to that point. So you haven't done that? No, no, no. It appears it's not a priority for you. No, no. The conversation I had with right. my director, Road Safety, indicated that assessment has been done. Yes, weeks but ago. you haven't applied for the funds so to use... So they have triggered the process. What right. it means is that we have an authority. We are an authority, but we report to a ministry. Mm. So obviously, the process I'm talking about is that you will have to write mm. to the appropriate authority. You are now going to do that. So yeah, you agree no, with me? It's been that. done. I'm sure. So, so you, you, you agree with me that you've not done no, that? No. You, I'm not saying you've neglected your duties. You've no. not done that as, no, as, no, as no. an authority. One, you are becoming very um, authoritative with your position that we have neglected. No, we have not. Yeah, but that's what you're supposed to be doing. So the point, let me tell you, every region has a regional engineer and they report to headquarters. They send their reports on a daily basis. I can assure you there's no problem that GHA is not aware of across the 16 regions of this country. There's no problem that the ministry is not aware of across the 16 regions of this country. We are aware of every problem on every road. And yet... And no. So, you see, just as I, 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 I said, the, 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 the bug can be so big yeah. to contain a lot of... The kitty sometimes can be too small. <laughs> so, so you're, you're just being diplomatic that. about mm. this. You have two yes. options, either to concede that you've been no. negligent we on have, that, no. or you don't have the you, funds to you repair. Know what would have happened, blessed, if we have been negligent for a minute? You, but you've done that over the past it's, five years. There will be disaster. People have died on that stretch. Accidents have happened. Do you agree? It is not because the bridge is not in a good condition. But you don't have lights there. It I mean, is, it is by all standards, if you look at the Ghana Highways Authority, yes. you, you exercise I will. I will. I will authority, you exercise some jurisdiction over that particular yes. stretch. As part of the standards requirement, and going by what, whatever it is that the Ghana Standards Authority would also say in that yeah. regard, it's clear that without the street lights, we cannot okay, pass, so you cannot me, pass no, the no, test no, no, no. of saying that the bridge is also, safe for, for persons to so use. Me, you agree? No, let me use this opportunity. You've not met the standards, no, no. have you? Standards, you see, we have a mandate. Our mandate is to fix the road. Okay. Not just the road, Maintain ensure the road. safety. Administ right? Administer and do administration. Precisely. Work. Good. So I'll You've come. You've not made the standard. No, 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 no. I'll come. I'll tell you. I'll explain to you. I hear people call me sometimes and say that there's no light on this road. Fine. I agree. But there's one bit people also do not understand. And I will use this opportunity to explain to you so that you as a media person, me as a media person, we educate the folks, our brothers, to understand there's something called functional integration. We need to work together, so collaboratively with other ministries. So when you talk about light, who do you think it falls under? Energy, right? But you're supposed to draw no, their attention. No, you're you're no, supposed no. to draw their no, attention. Me, In fact, me, no, 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 no. what you are so, doing now so is much, running no, away no, no, from I am not, your duty, what you're supposed to be doing. Everybody listening to me now, bless. Everybody listening to me now knows what I am saying. So we're supposed to work with the Ministry of Energy. In some of these cases, they have to provide the power. They are not doing the that. energy, yes. So when I get calls from people and they say, oh, this road is not... No, 
But Cecil, so you're, you're just it making is... my point because no. you told me that the last time you applied, yes. In fact, it's clear that you haven't even applied no. for it yet. I, I, the last time you asked for that. funding to deal with that, no, no, I didn't say that. Has not happened until I'm recently. Sure, That's sure, what you're telling I'm us sure now. The viewers got to yeah. Me so no, but, but the point is, you, I you're didn't telling say us you that way. I. When I was the last it... time you because no. so per the procedure, you're supposed to notify the sector agencies. When was the last time you did that? We have a maintenance schedule we run. When was the last time you did that? And. We have budgets specifically for maintenance issues. You understand? And so, if you say when was the last time, I mean... Yeah, but it will be critical we, in providing context because the yeah. last time we were so, there was about three years ago. Residents say this issue has spanned five years. Five good years and many people have died on that particular street. No, if it's about the street light again, I think I've made or given There's enough explanation. There's darkness, you explanation agree. You that agree. It is not solely our responsibility, but... We must also pull along. So, from after speaking to me, make efforts. Find out from Ministry of Energy. Mm. Yes, what's their role to make sure that that section is. But the bridge belongs to you. You agree? Now, no, no. As for that one, as for that one, I've been to the area. I've done road. some background yes. checks. It appears that on a number of occasions, some of your reports accept the fact that that bridge has some defects and ought to be fixed. What do you say so to that? So, what's is, if you're talking about the expansion joints? that the gentleman spoke about. I, I've just told you that we have done some assessment. And I don't think it was only recently that assessment was done. But the situation is not as bad as it's been put out there. If it's as bad as it's been put out there, I can assure you that our engineers or team of engineers, I know how hardworking they are. And every now and then they are in the field, they would have dealt with this issue. But it's not as bad as it is. And I cited Adomi as an example, that when somebody put out a story that the bridge was shaking, there was so much fear and panic. If you remember, those who followed that story, even traditional media picked up the story and ran with it. But that was not the situation. And I have explained to you that, speaking to the engineers, they will tell you. I mean, those vibrations are within acceptable limits. So it does not take away the design life of the bridge. As, as, as it is. It does not take away the design nature of the bridge as it is. It is only for us to re-echo the point that mm. those vibrations are necessary. Those vibrations are within acceptable limits. Mm. Whatever defects have been found on that stretch, I am telling you that mm. they will be fixed. Okay. Give us timelines, okay. because obviously um, there are so many people out there watching us who come from this area. In fact, a lot of people use that stretch. You agree yeah. of how busy yeah. the network is. Give us timelines on, on, on that. Um, I cannot speak for the road safety people, but the conversation I had with them indicates that as soon as possible, um, they're going to get to this. So let's, 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 let's see what happens. I mean, it, it will be soon, I can assure you. Mm. We need to do this briefly. Uh, clearly, I understand that Maxwell Agwagba was there about three or four years okay. ago. Uh, let's just watch that briefly and then we'll get some more reactions on that. From a radio set on the compound of Alice Ayuku at Tefle in the Volta region, the small radio set has become her companion after she lost her 30 year old son, Ibinez Datonyeva, on the Sugakopa Bridge. As music is food to the soul, Around this time, she sits on a compound to feed her depressed soul with some bobobo music. It was around 12 a.m. on the 8th September 2017. Ebenezer was returning from an all-night service in his church. His motor rider tried to veer off from the defect on the poorly lit bridge. He crashed into an oncoming vehicle. The episode is still fresh in the mind of his mother. He has three children and they are all in school. He was the one who used to provide all my needs. It's so hard to feed myself now. Sometimes I feel like committing suicide. Today, I cried for hours on the community school park. His death has worried me. Well, except there. So we need to go, but uh, so, so that's uh, clear evidence for you, indicating how, on a daily basis, people are being affected. Yeah. Um, What's your final word as we wrap am, up on this conversation? I'm, I'm sad to hear this story, but it also goes to tell all of us that, 
you know, sometimes on the road, you must also exercise extreme caution and um, consider safety issues, even if they are not there. But bless, you know, even on our routes, when we have provided the safety accessories, what do people do? We've provided caution notes for people to even adhere to road speed regulations. What do you find people do? They go beyond. They drive. You know, I, I don't understand as sometimes people even deliberately go and chop off some of these road signs, take out all the various accessories. Now, are you aware that even on some of our bridges, people even wake up in the middle of the night and go and remove boats and knots? Really? Yes. Yes. Then the, we are the same people, we turn around, and then when there's problems. So on daily basis, our engineers are on the road. I'm telling you, we drive, we also drive. We, we, we don't live in isolation, or we don't operate in silos. We, we also move along, I mean, the stretches, and we know. If you find some of those compost bridges within the urban centers, and I tell you what is happening, you will be shocked. Not too long ago, we visited one of the places around 18 Junction. There's a bridge that connects the abattoir into... Uh, Spintex, that area. If you know that bridge there, go and find out the number of bolts and knots that have been removed People are by Ghanaians. Them. Yes! They go and scrap them and they sell them. People see them. You understand? So, these things, we must all be vigilant and then we report um, issues. And I'm happy what you guys are doing. Keep it up. Um, as and when you need our input, we'll be available mm. to, to, to share them. But for timelines? Um, you're still insisting on those. Yes, I need timelines, obviously. I, I, I've just informed you. I'm sure I'll be back in no time and we'll be talking about the, uh, the success story as far as this is concerned. In no time, and I mean it. Cecil, so, so, uh, I'm grateful. Thank that you. you.